Audible lets you enjoy all your audio entertainment in one app. That is the truth. Audible offers an incredible selection of audiobooks across every genre. As an Audible member, you can choose one title a month to keep from their entire catalog, including the latest bestsellers and new releases. I just finished the audio title Lightbringer, which is the sixth in a series, and I just love it. It's so detailed, and being able to listen to it really, really helps me keep up with what's going on. Try Audible free for 30 days. Visit audible.com slash crappins or text crappins to 500-500. That's audible.com slash crappins or text crappins to 500-500. Hello. Welcome to Watch What Happens, the podcast for all that crap we love to talk about on Yo Bravs. I'm Ronnie, and that is Ben over there. Hello, Ben. Hi, Ronnie. How are you? Good, babe. How's everything going over there with you? Oh, it's just great. Just doing great over here, you know? Blow Deck Med season is in full effect, so lots of fun stuff. Sure is. Thanks, everybody, so much for being part of Crappy Hour last night, Monday night. It's every other Monday at 5.30 p.m. Pacific Time, 8.30 p.m. Eastern on our Instagram Live. It's our little Bravo gossip show. So come join us for that. When we're not doing that, the weeks we're not doing that, we do dwell. Hello. That's our Wondery Plus show. And that is all about House Hunters. Those are House Hunters recaps. And then these days... On this show, on the regular show, we do these for free. Um, <laughs> but if you want to just keep paying for things, you can you can get video <laughs> versions of these on our Patreon, <laughs> patreon.com slash watch it crappens. That's where our bonus episodes live and videos of most all of our recaps. And uh, if you don't want to pay for video, you can get them a week later for free on YouTube. Thank you to everybody who supports us. Thank you so much. And today, we're here with Below Deck Mediterranean, episode two, Too Many Cooks. Yeah. Previously, hey Norma, go fuck yourself. That's basically pretty where we much. left off. <laughs> that was a pretty eventful first episode last week. My was... God, a lot happened. You got a big liar face Ruan in here, uh, <sighs> trying to make us believe he's got paperwork when he stole all of his paperwork, and then he had a big Instagram post being like, "Oh, oh, no, no, no! People just don't understand how I've got it done here. I've, uh, yeah, I did have paperwork. I guess I just got it from someone who was faking the paperwork to me when they were giving it to me." but I still paid for the school and went to the paperwork but still couldn't name the school and named a place that he went to school where there is no school so no sir. one nice try no. sir no uh yeah you're right so much happened in the first episode that I literally thought we were like four episodes into the season when I like when I looked down to write down what episode number it was I was a little shocked that it was episode two I was like really we're in episode two, but I thought we already had a few episodes where like there was no bosun or something like that. But honestly, we're just in kind of like a a continuous sort of below deck down under sort of like uh what's it's like a spectrum. It's like a it's it just feels like down under didn't really end because Luca just sort of came over from there to here. Now we got two who was on last season. Ends. But especially this like us, I know, but this Australia really feels like an extension. I mean, this med feels like an extension of Australia. It just feels even more so like we're in the same season a little bit, you know? I didn't get any I'd separation. I like to refer to these episodes as the BK episodes before Kyle or the longer version um, BK double broiler W. B T S M before Kyle was bugging the shit out of me. This is going to be that time in the Bible where we're like, Oh my God, I miss, I miss the times BK. Um, but we ended up, we ended with the Norma fight, Captain and Sandy and Norma going at each other's throats. And now we're beginning with another one. Norma, you're kidding me. We can't get anyone for two weeks. Unbelievable. And there's no music as we open. And she's like, wow, Norma. So the last thing, the last, the least shocking thing to happen in all of this is that you still can't do your job. Bloop. Yeah, well, actually, I am doing my job, but I'm on vacation because I am sick and tired of having to 
listen to you fire people because you keep on hiring ding-dongs on your stupid boat that you can't even drive in the first place. Bloop. Bloop. Norma, I'm just going to need to actually read the CVs of the people that apply this time and not just have you hiring people off of Craigslist, okay? Bloop. Okay, I totally get that, but next time just know that when you request CVs from people, then don't go to CVS and say, hey, where are the resumes? Because that's a whole different thing. <laughs> Bloop. <laughs> Bloop. And P.S. Uh, if Craigslist is a good enough place for you to find a hairstylist, uh, it's a good enough place to find a bosun. So stop being a hypocrite, you stupid cow. Bloop. Bloop. Well, at least I didn't actually try to hire Craig for my boat. <laughs> it's not a real person. Bloop. <laughs> I, I totally would have hired Craig if he was a real person because he's famous and we're a television show. You goddamn idiot. Change your hair. Bloop. Hey, remember the time you asked if you could hire Jenny Craig as a chief stew? You idiot. Bloop. Bloop. Last 10 pounds on that hiring round, you dumb bitch. <laughs> Love you, bitch. Bloop. Bloop. Love you too, bitch, but not really. I'm on vacation. <laughs> Stop bothering me. Bloop. Uh, I'm just going to leave the three continuing dots. <laughs> Never get an answer. Captain Sandy could just sit there and stare at those. <laughs> Actually, what's funny is that Sandy goes, when she hangs up the phone, she goes, oh, okay, all right, ciao. You know, Norma's like, <laughs> bitch does one one charter in, the, in Italy, and now she's saying ch- ciao? <laughs> <laughs> I've been, I'm still here in America. Since when does this bitch say ciao? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Brooke, who is the temp, uh, Stu is doing this. Ho, 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 hi, how are you? That's like her service thing. She just giggles a lot at people. And um, the guy, I think his name is Geraldo or is it Gerardo? I don't know. I, I didn't write it down the first time and then I was fucked the rest of the episode. His name is Gerard. Gerard. Uh, I do so like the idea that like, it could be Geraldo, though. I do too. They just keep throwing chairs at his face. <laughs> Still he's funny. like, oh, damn it. Never going to live it down. <laughs> I just read an article about Geraldo, actually. The New York Times had this random profile about him because he's like sailing a boat from Long Island to Cleveland via the Hudson River and the Erie Canal. And so a reporter went on the boat with him and he was just like talking about his life and times. And I thought, I can't believe journalism's dying. Anyway, continue on. Really? I mean, it has been ever since Geraldo was on the air. That Man, that guy really <laughs> hangs on. Got to, that's the perfect I, person to sail a boat because he knows how to hang on. Okay, <laughs> Geraldo is always here. <laughs> he really, uh, I believe the movie All is Lost is based off of Geraldo. He's like my grandma taught me about Jesus. Like you don't need to believe in Jesus for Jesus to be right behind you. I mean, I feel he, like Geraldo is just always there. It's like I don't even need to believe in him. He'll still be mentioned every once in a while. If it weren't for Geraldo, we wouldn't have had this season of Real Housewives of Orange County because, of course, Geraldo was the original person who opened up a vault. And like in this season, there was nothing in it. (laughs) (laughs) So Natalia is making the mistake that we see happen on the show all the time where she's offering people a choice of breakfast instead of saying, here's Mm. what you're getting, waffles and scrambled eggs. So she's like, who would like their eggs? How would you like them? And of course, they have to answer like over medium. I really like mine over easy. I like mine over easy medium. I like mine hardish medium softish in the center (laughs) over. So, um, so then, uh, meanwhile, the water's choppy. It's a very choppy water situation, and like the to- the, the jet skis are going down into the water, but it's, everything's like swaying around and everything. And Laura, even though her name is spelled Laura, but she's Laura, correct? Because last week I was calling her Laura, but this week I know everyone calls her Laura, but she's spelled Laura. Can we get Geraldo Rivera on the I'm case here? So, I'm just... I know I'm trying so hard to care, and it's just it's so weird that it won't come. It's, it's it won't. Come. It won't. Um, so she's like. <laughs> Wait, let me see if I can wait. Give me a second here to remember her her Afrikaans accent. <laughs> she's like, she's like, it's very dangerous because the wind is gush. <laughs> her accent is like so. How does it go again? She's like, she's like, it's very dangerous because the wind is gushing. 
no. but still come this Luca has. <laughs> Listen, I don't have any of these accents still, so it's totally unfair for me to be saying no. But, but that's not if Laura. it were a yes or no, Laura. that would be a no. Now, do I know how to do it? I don't. I'm going to guess. My guess is it's very dangerous because the wind is rushing still. But look how calm Luca has, you know? <laughs> I would just love to be on that level because everything's just okay all the time. But he's beautiful. He has the most beautiful qualities about him. <laughs> Like he's a God's gift to people. <laughs> she punctuates. She punctuates everything she says with a little. <laughs> it's like She's not even a long cute. laugh. Yeah, it's just like this little. <laughs> also, to anybody mortified on these accents, welcome to our show. Um, yeah, we're terrible at these, and they will eventually get better, but probably never good. We okay? never so. Yeah. We never say this is how all people of this language sound. We're just saying we're just trying to sound like this one person and we usually mess up and we just for us, we just like to see how close we can get over the course of a season, which is usually not very close, but we try. We try. We're like the opposite of the Trevor Project. We bully people and then we promise you it's not going to get better. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So the chef gets the egg orders and he's like, over medium easy eggs. What even is that? It's just made up words to make him think he knows more about food. They're either runny eggs or they're hard eggs. Okay. You can't talk about your Michelin star ass and how Michelin-y you are and then diss egg orders. Like, yeah. a chef is judged by his eggs, sir. Learn your eggs. Yeah. And I will never forget the epi the season of Top Chef that opened up with uh, all the chefs having to make omelets. And they, I think like 75% of them could not make an omelet. It was hilarious. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a real thing. Yeah. So now the jet ski is going back up because it's too choppy for jet skiing. Okay. And so it's going back up. And then um, now basically uh, Luca calls Sandy. And it has well, no they're bearing pissed on... about the eggs because well, these are yes. not over medium and over. Yeah, so Dr. Kean uh, is a real dick about it. He's like, huh, well, uh, now we know that Jack is mortal. <laughs> We've learned that. His eggs suck. I say this as one doctor to a non-doctor. In this case, Jack. Not a doctor of <sighs> eggs, apparently. <laughs> so then, I'm sorry, go ahead to your Luca scene. So I don't even know no, why that was I, so no. important, but I was like, I needed to get the egg dissing. No, there was there, nothing. I, I was the just against the chef for not knowing how to do the eggs. But now that the guy is making fun of him, I really hate the doctor and want him to like be thrown overboard. No, there was no Luca scene. I just had a note where I said, Luca's calling Sandy. It was one of those things where I thought was going to be a scene and then it wasn't. So I just have this spare note in my notes that says, Luca calls Sandy. It has no bearing on anything that happens on the rest of this episode or the rest of the series. Well, one of the guests is like, hey, I heard somebody calling Sandy to meet. So that was something that happened, but I need this. I need to get off this boat. Please, can we get off this boat? So this guy's not doing very well. So then, um, let's see. Jack is, when when the doctor says, they're cutting back and forth, as you guys can tell. But <laughs> when the doctor says, we found his mortality, we found his weakness, it's egg. And then it cuts to Jack in the kitchen dropping a spatula. <laughs> I like I that the editor's like, save that. Put that in the Jack failing bin. That part where yes. Jack drops a spatula, we're going to need that one day. <laughs> wow, it's only episode two. Nailed it. <laughs> I was surprised they didn't add in like a boing sound effect or like a slide whistle, like or dun, 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 dun. Uh, and then. But Kian's like such a dick. He's like, yeah, eggs. He's a talented chef, but he can't cook eggs for crap. I'm like, okay, you could just say these were not how I like my eggs. And then he's like, I mean, and by the way, in case you have more Americans, um, maybe just have a guide, just like a picture guide of how to do a medium egg, because this was this this was not it. Because, and I'm glad that this was finally addressed on this show because we've said it before, but we've never seen it publicly addressed. And that is the fact that Americans order eggs like assholes. And that's just the truth. We always have, and we always will. That is like a very American thing to all order your eggs as a completely different way and then say things like over medium. Yeah. I so feel like not. it's only over easy and over hard, right? Well, I mean, if there's a hard and a soft, there's a medium. But yes. I mean, but then what you yeah. want a runny fucking egg can we stop yeah so now um luca's telling captain sandy about that it's choppy out there and she goes this will pass and um then they're basically gonna they're gonna take the the guests to the shore because the guests are getting antsy one guy has basically vertigo right now he's seasick nathan can't yeah. take it nathan Wuss. nathan 
Nathan. And um, yeah, he's a wuss. And I think this really shows a lot about his character. And we don't know much about him as a person, but we can all agree. <laughs> he's a failure. He's a failure in life. And he's he a should failure reconsider his choices. Being. And anyone who is romantically attached to him should probably leave him for someone better. <laughs> there. <laughs> Bye, Nathan. <laughs> Enjoy masturbation, Nathan. Um, so now Natalia Your hot dogs are is too in the... thick on the outside, also. Your what? Hot dogs are too thick on the outside. Nathan's hot dogs. Too much. Oh, and always lighting. your bread is too dry. You know, the best thing about a hot dog is a bun. And Nathan's hot dog just doesn't nail the bun. It's, it's no Hebrew National. It. Hebrew National no, is not. just so much better than Nathan's. Sorry, it's, but if uh, Nathan's wants to advertise with us, we love Nathan's. Love Nathan's. Suddenly turn. So Natalia's like, so they're saying the eggs weren't running. And Jack's like, I knew it. I knew when I was cooking them, the eggs weren't running enough. I fucking ate eggs. I'll be honest. I don't eat breakfast. It's overrated. Get it out of the way. We've been wrong for hundreds of years. You'd know, just launched dinner. And now I've got to redeem myself with these people. <laughs> I spent the first six years of my life not even having breakfast. I was a zombie too. <laughs> so I can do all the fancy things in the world, but when it comes to eggs, it just falls off. <laughs> don't put that on your resume so um <laughs> just make eggs so Natalia's now, like americans invent different egg soils every day <laughs> which is true <laughs> that was a that was an <laughs> accurate <true>. read <laughs> <laughs> that was we, we deserve we deserve that yes i love yeah. the reading americans for filth on this show because it's always <laughs> accurate <laughs> americans inventing different egg styles every day <laughs> <laughs> it's true and we're terrible we acknowledge this so um, now Dr. Keen goes into Sandy's office and he's like, hey, so uh, a couple of the guys are tossing their cookies because they were made with eggs. Your chef. That was a reference. So Gosh, if you... that sounds like a fun time tossing cookies. I'll always be here to catch cookies. So if, uh, if you think it'll be like this for a while, maybe we'll go to the shore for a bit because, again, uh, one of my friends is really hurling a lot. Oh, God, I wish there was a doctor on board. Huh. That was a joke. But you could maybe help, maybe. I don't know. Could you maybe give him an eye lift? Maybe he'll barf less then, you know? Maybe <laughs> replace one of his lids with some underarm fat. That would be fun. <laughs> maybe if you put some butt tissue on his eyelid, you wouldn't have to see the sea as much and wouldn't be puking everywhere, huh? I don't know, just thinking out loud. Here you go. So, okay, you know what? That's a great idea. Let's go to shore. I've got you all hooked up for a hug conference, okay? You're going to be met by a beautiful woman who's in charge of her life, who's going to hug you all, and her name is Mapton Pandy. Okay, she's going to give you guys a lecture on women <laughs> women empowerment. Hug ya, and then we're going to have some lunch. Hopefully, I'm going to toss some cookies, and you're going to catch them in your mouth. Okay, not Nathan. <laughs> He's going to be recovering from the ball skin on his eyes. So. Ah, good old unreliable Nathan. So Sandy's like, <laughs> she's like, oh, I feel bad, you know? Like, my friends are on board, and they're down, you know, and we're down team members, and I want to give them everything that they paid for, you know? And if this charter doesn't go well... I'm going to have to find a new doctor, which will be easier for me because I, I, I don't have an eyelid issue. So I can find, I can see. I was trying to make Listen, a joke about my eyelid. When I open, you know? <laughs> so then, no. <laughs> Eyes on the prize, am I right? <laughs> so Luca comes to check on Natalia while she's busting the table, clearing the table or whatever. And she's like, oh, you wait. Come freshen me up with the hug, will ya? Nice, nice. All right, gropey. All right. I was quite a hug, aren't you? Just kidding. Cop a feel, why don't you? <laughs> Just kidding about that. He grabbed my boob. Oh, my God. Marjaminas. And then we get a really wonderful performance by Natalia's arms as she describes the following. She starts talking about her and her boyfriend's relationship. And while she does it, she keeps doing all these like X, all this like crazy tarmac stuff with her hand. She's like, me and my boyfriend have been together for four months. And like, he wants an open relationship. But I'm like unsure about that because every guy I've been with has cheated. And, you know, I'd rather be in an honest relationship from the start. Unfortunately, I fell in love with him before. I knew he was the star that he wanted i was like her arms were going everywhere i was like wow you have really one up to shannon bador on bravo and that is an accomplishment mm -hmm. so but with luca there's no home and flirting is there i mean looking is fine touching is a no go or it is because i'm in an open relationship is it or is it not can i flirt can i not flirt i don't know is touching okay pervert oh my god i was talking to myself <laughs> do i go to the bridge and ask what do i do what do i do <laughs> americans okay. and their eggs am i right 
I can tell you this much. I say this is someone who really likes you. You are not built for open relationships. Most people aren't. A lot of people will say they're into open relationships. That people who say they're into open, listen, I'm into open relationships because I like to cheat. <laughs> I'm fine with cheating on you. But if you're in an open relationship with me, that's going to be a problem. I'm going to, I'm not going to like it. I know a lot of people are, the, some people can do it. Some people can do it. Um, a lot of people cannot. You, well, Natalia, are one of the people who cannot. I can already read it all over you. Yeah, she this can't. is not going to work out for you. It's a real shame because that really goes against that. Like I always thought the old adage was there's wood ships and there's iron ships, but the best ships are open relationships. <laughs> You want to get your ass kicked? <laughs> Tell me you're in an open relationship with me. That's... I was just I was just referencing that because that is like the new the new toast that we hear on Bravo all the time, including tonight. Yes, including today. It's time for a commercial. It's time for a crappens commercial. So uh, she flirts with Luca a little bit. Will they or won't they? So then um, now the tender, they're going to take these guys to shore because they're getting seasick, but they're going to put them on the tender to do it. And the tender is insane. It's like, because <laughs> the sea is tossing the tender as well. Yeah. And so Natalia tells them that they're, they'll be getting onto the tender to take them onto the shore. And Dr. Kean's like, tender? She goes, Yes. Oh, you know what? The tender's a small boat. A tender in America is a chicken, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's right. So, uh, just as a reminder, <sighs> Americans, you love your crazy eggs and you think tender's a chicken. All right. So, just want to give everyone a scoreboard on American culture right now. Chicken tender or just a relationship style? Because my boyfriend likes to get tender with whoever's in front of him right at that moment. It doesn't have to be me. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. All right. Just get in the boat. Get in the tiny boat. My boyfriend enjoys it when I make him chicken tenders, but also when other people make him chicken tenders. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> um, so they get on the te they're going to get on the tender, and then um, this guy Nathan is like, "Um, could I have like a puke bag?" And Luca just stares at him like, "No, yeah, Overboard. he's like no." It's not an airplane. Just <laughs> just go overboard. All right, mate? <laughs> Which is funny because I feel like actually on a super yacht, if someone asks for a puke bag, even though you can puke overboard, they should get him a puke bag. Right? <laughs> I like that he's just like, no. No. He's like, I no. think sometimes that's the best. You just sometimes people need to hear the word now. And Luca just smiles at him, just like just with this blank smile. Like, no. No, you, yeah. <laughs> you can't do uh, that. So he goes, you know, the only thing is the small boat moves more than the large boat and they are in for 10 minutes of absolute hell. So they get on and Nathan's barfing already over the side. And then <laughs> on the bottom of the screen, it says eight minutes of vomiting later. <laughs> so they get to Portofino and Luca's like, Portofino means home of the dolphins. So if they're lucky, they may see some dolphins and hopefully they won't puke on it. <laughs> <laughs> dolphins have little dolphin umbrellas they're like americans americans are coming sloppy eggs coming out both sides <laughs> so talia is uh telling people what to clean and jack is cutting some meat and then Haley wakes up and she, she's ready to go back to her shift and we just see her get out of bed and she goes mm, i smell like dick yeah definitely smell like dick <laughs> and then Talia's like, it's definitely going to be difficult stepping down from Chief Stew Roll when the new person arrives. But this first charter, I'm like shitting myself a little. Like we're crew members down. Brooks never worked on a boat. Look at her. She's actually putting a mop in an electrical socket. I also want to impress Jack. This is a great opportunity for me to show Captain Sandy that I can be an amazing Chief Stew and I will have absolutely no problem whatsoever when I have to go back down to Third Stew. It's amazing because Captain Sandy is trying to say, listen, you're in a chief stew with this, but you're in a chief stew relationship with this boat, but it's an open relationship. So sometimes you're going to be a chief stew and then sometimes you're not going to be a chief stew. And I just want to prove to everyone that I'm fine with it. <laughs> so then Natalia's talking about uh, setting up dinner with like dinner tonight is going to be like a multi-course thing and there's going to be an EDM party afterwards. So, by the way, for everyone who loves EDM and loves going to like the Electric Daisy Festival and like loves listening to Marshmallow and um, Tiesto, um, I hate to break it to you, but these guys have killed EDM. Sorry, the genre's over. So, <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> Dr. Kian ruined it. Sorry. Yeah. 
So then we cut to Brooke making a bed, and she's just giggling. She's like, ha, 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 hi, babe. <laughs> then we cut to the guys touring and shopping through the little town. And uh, Norma, it's time to get a text from Norma. Bloop. Sandy, still no bulls in, but I've got an experienced deckhand for you. If you can be called captain, you can call this person whatever you want, really. <laughs> I mean, we're just giving away titles at this point, am I right? Bloop. Hey, Norma, I got something for you also. It's called a middle finger. Okay, get me a bosun. Bloop. <laughs> Day in a fire. Okay, if this guy works half as hard as you, the boat would sink. <laughs> Bloop. Bloop. Oh, yeah, just like your second and third marriages, huh? Bloop. <laughs> bloop. Choke on an anchor dick. A hole. Love ya. Bloop, bloop. I'm not really into dick, but maybe you'd know that if you're a better friend. Bloop. <laughs> bloop, Dick's not into you either and never would be. Okay, have a great one. <laughs> bloop, bloop. Yeah, you too. Hope you have a great weekend buying things at Dick's Sporting Bads. Because that's what you are. Bloop. <laughs> three, three dots. <laughs> Moving. <laughs> so, um, Brooke hurts herself rolling a towel on the floor. <laughs> 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 just having a great one just having a great two episode arc on this series there are no notes better to read back to myself than below deck notes oh, every here's, time <laughs> here's my next note sandy looking through binoculars and no follow through nothing it's just, oh yeah Ooh, so yeah they funny. were <laughs> so she hurts herself rolling a towel on the floor and goes ow and then starts laughing and Jess is like, are you okay? And she goes, I just hit myself on the funny bone and it wasn't that funny. <laughs> uh, you know, the funny okay. bone doesn't actually make you laugh. But anyway, so uh, Natalia's checking on housekeeping and everything. Uh, stuff like that's happening. The deckies are blowing up toys. Luca gets in the tender to get, to get the guests. The guests are like walking around a church. You know, I didn't know like Dr. Kean saying something like, uh -huh. I think we found... Uh, I think we found Michelangelo's, uh, he's really mortal. <laughs> no electricity in here. Am I right, guys? Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, <laughs> so Sweetness. Jessica and Natalia are talking, and Natalia's like, I just like to get ahead of things. I've got an OCD. It's undiagnosed, but I don't know how many days we'll be chief and second. You know, it could go away any day. Like right now, you might, I'm in a relationship with you as my second, but you know, who knows? I might be second tomorrow, and you could be third. I mean, that's called an open relationship, and I'm totally fine with it. <laughs> All right. And Jessica's like, Yeah, man, fuck the hierarchy. <laughs> I think Natalia's stressed that the new chief stew is coming, but it's for the best because the chief stew needs to have a better way to delegate. So we're all doing equal work. <laughs> also, I just want someone to follow. <laughs> I just really want that so badly. So then um, Sandy's inspecting the toys and she walks by the banana, which these days is looking quite a bit like a Nathan's hot dog, if you ask me. She's like, oh, God, I love that banana. <laughs> she really is. She's, <laughs> she's literally extolling the banana once again like every season she, loves she just loves it she loves God, it i love that banana and this one is technically a hot dog it's oh it is a hot, hot dog it's, it's labeled a hot dog okay i thought it was dog. a hot dog but then but they were acting like, like, like a banana. A banana yeah she's like i guess the toy itself is called a banana it's a hot dog shaped banana <laughs> I guess. <laughs> and so she's like, yeah, God, I love that banana. Okay, let's get the trampoline out. Okay, that would be awesome. And the tender comes back and they get pink goddess drinks. And Luca whips out the slide and Whoa. gets it over just fine and gets it blown up. And there is no slide drama. Now, how is this guy not fired on the first day? The yeah. show depends on slide drama. I, this is for the first time in... 10 years, no slide drama. And then maybe it's because of the Davit. Because Sandy's like, you know, oh, that Davit is incredible. Wow, what a great Davit. You know, if you put the D upside down, it becomes Pavit from Real Housewives of New York. That's funny. Anyway, good Davit. So Luca. God Davit. Sorry, didn't mean to curse. God, I love that Davit. God Davit, I love that Davit. Davit to Coveney, huh? So. Uh, yeah, he was hot. He was a hot. He was a hot. That's Norma loved that Davit to Coveney. So good luck for her. She'll never get him. She's too ugly. There, I said it. He's out of her league. X Files, more like the no sex files for Norma. <laughs> That's every day, though. <laughs> the truth is out there, and the truth is Norma sucks. And I'm putting it out there. 
<laughs> Aliens are amongst us, you know, because Norma looks like E.T. The bad human resources employees are out there. Okay. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> so um, she's like, okay, wow. I love that banana. Okay, next scene. So Natalia and Jack are talking about courses. Uh, he's going to do a risotto, a salmon starter, a venison. She goes, what's that? She's like, look, Bambi. Oh, you don't know what venison is? Come on. How long have you worked on super yachts? Yeah. You've never heard the word venison? Seriously. By the time I was 19, I was basically running a Michelin star at a kitchen. And I was, wasn't was emotionally ready for that position, you know, because... I was literally running a kitchen in a Michelin store, but I went on sabbatical. <laughs> Have you ever tried to cook a four course meal on a tire? It's very difficult. So I went on a sabbatical and I went to Asia and just changed my whole mindset. I was teaching the locals how to cook Western food and vice versa. But vice versa is a strange use because it makes it sound like the Western food was teaching me how to cook locals. But you know what I'm saying. <laughs> There's a lot of Italian influence and Asian influence in my food. You can see my journey on the courses. Well, first, the journey starts at 19, then gets fired, then moves to Asia, then gets moved <laughs> back again. And ends up in the Chili's. So, yeah. <laughs> so I've made an journey. egg roll. i made an egg roll. And when you open it up, marinara sauce comes out. <laughs> so, Lara is pulling By up By the way, a, some a would rope. say Italian food already does have a lot of Asian influence in it to begin with. Does noodles, it? noodles, or is it the other way around? I think it's no. I, I think it's not the whole. I'm not going to jump into this battle. Huh? But I respect. I will tell you the reason I respect both cultures: the noodles and the carb work. <laughs> That's great carb. Work. It's great carb work. Uh, anyway, yeah, no. Uh, Central Asia is most likely the first area to have produced noodles thousands of years ago, according to archaeologists on the PBS website that I just looked up very quickly. So <laughs> safe. <laughs> I feel like Asia's going to win kind of in any historical battle, aren't they? Yeah. Yes. Always. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, Laura is Laura, 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 Laura. She's pulling up a rope from a swim platform and it's stuck a swim platform <laughs> and it's stuck on something. And she's like, Haley, Haley, could you please come to the swim platform? Oh, this is a clusterfuck. Everything is caught on everything else. The line is caught around the prop. So I'm going to swim underneath the prop. I'm going to unhook it. And then I'm going to go around the prop and get it around. I was like, this is very dangerous work. I don't like this <laughs> happening. I don't like Laura being put in this position. I think Sandy would not like Laura being put in I this position. Tell somebody you're doing it, maybe. you. What if the captain's like, oh, you know what? I want to move <laughs> five inches to the right. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I was like, uh, maybe you tell someone. Um, I'm just like expecting like a puddle of red water all of a sudden and then commercial break. It's like, you come back. Well, Laura died, everyone. So, we're, no, hey, Norma, do you have, um, do you have any, do you have anyone who could be a deckhand who's also um, alive? <laughs> we have a little bit of a problem. <laughs> That'll take me about seven weeks. Okay, good. <laughs> so, wish me luck. So, um, she calls Haley and Haley is like, oh my God, do I smell like dick? And she's like, okay, we need to get this prop from under the boat. And Haley's like, you do it. I'm not touching that shit. So she goes down under and she does it. She unwraps the right. thing and she comes back up and she goes, oh, yeah, I handled that shit. I'm a boss. Like, she, yeah. Um, yeah, but by, by the way, she does it, but not before she does the classic below deck thing, which is there's a rope that's a ta that's it's it's wound around the, the prop. And if the prop turns on, the entire boat could explode in a fireball and we all sink and die. This could be the end of the charter. I'm like, but you're just going to unwind the rope from the commercial. Prop, so. dun, 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 dun. <laughs> okay, but wasn't this kind of crazy because she does it. Okay, first of all, she does it and then smoke starts pluming up. Did you notice that? I did not There's notice like tons that. of smoke and Maybe she crawls she out gas. and like the engine's going now. I was like, did somebody turn this on after? What what just happened here? Did Laura just almost die and they just brushed over it or what? I feel like maybe it could have. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. It was, uh, it was, it was, I definitely had the same thought that you did, which is like, is, is this like, is someone going to turn on the prop while she's down there? Like someone should say something like, don't 
touch the propellers. I you was know? scared. I was scared. So now we get a slide cam, um, which nobody needs. Okay. No. And if, yeah, nobody needs to put a slide cam on. So then um, basically work, 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 work. Play cooking, stacking, cleaning, play cooking, stacking, cleaning, cooking, toy cleaning, cooking, cleaning, toys going up, toys going party. down. Party, 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 um, EDM tonight. Uh, Natalia's like, you want to know one of my least favorite things? Boyfriends that cheat on you and call it open. Re- okay. Besides that, long dinners. <laughs> yeah. She doesn't like those. And then we have um, Laura and Haley um, doing that classic thing on Below Deck. Ugh, you know, this is so... Th- every single season you see this, when the two lower deck hands just sing the praises of the boats and all this. God, they just... I mean, how many seasons do we have to see this happen where they just say, oh, my God, he's so calm and he's collected and he's really sweet and he is really like a great boss. I'm like, all right, enough already, Below Deck. We're sick of this cliche. I think it's because he's like so hot. Yeah. I yeah. don't even I know think- what Luca's doing. I just he's just so hot. Yes, you're doing great. Yeah, this is the first time ever that any of the deckies have ever. I was going to say, I, was, I mean, listen, once a below deck is done, it's out of my brain DVR. So I couldn't even tell if you were being sarcastic. I was like, no, Does this happen? every single, no, every single time, like a bosun's like, Hey, can you bring in that boat? Like ugh, they're on such a power trip. Like, ugh, like, do they even realize how much work we're doing here? And, and, and like Haley and Laura, like, he's great. Love his, love his leadership style. He's a really wonderful person. This is I know, really wonderful. So positive. The whole crew is so positive. And they just want to work. They're like, whatever I could do. Yeah. Hey, could you do this for me? They're like, love to. I would love that. <laughs> hey, there's a ro- You know what? The rope is around the prop. You know what? I'm going to just take care of that by myself without anybody asking me. So Let's then um, the guests are getting ready for dinner. And um, then Toomey texts Sandy. And she's like, great news. Carl and all got our visas. Italy, here we come. Although actually Carl will be a little bit behind me because he said he had to go see someone named Frank and his smile. I don't know what that means. <laughs> so in the galley, Jack's like, I forgot what I put with the venison. Could you remind me, dear? And Talia's like, pain fraud, whatever animal. Bimbi. <laughs> with common roasted carrot balsamic ass sauce. Is that what it is? It's like, oh, God, yes. It's one of the things about being a wizard in Harry Potter. You do so many good things, you forget about it. So many courses, there's a lot can go wrong, but I'm pretty confident because Natalia's on. And he loves his Natalia. She does. But also don't forget about Voldemort because that could be a problem. So then, Also, you're not Harry Potter. Please stop with your Ron Weasley. It's, not, it's like every time he says it, I'm like, you're Ron Weasley. <laughs> stop trying to give yourself a raise. Even Harry Potter can make eggs, and he doesn't even have to use his magic for it. <laughs> okay. So, uh, San- Sandy Patriot is... Patriots over easy now. <laughs> Sorry, stupid. I don't know why I'm even talking. We don't have to talk all the time, you know? What if we were just quiet for a while? I'm just really sad I don't know my Harry Potter more. Like, I didn't really... I'm just... I really would have liked to have yes ended that a little bit more and I could Well you you had your chance, but now it's cancelled. <laughs> so thanks a lot, JK, <laughs> being such an asshole. All right, but we'll move past that. Not a political show. Luca and the captain. So the captain's like, So Luca, how's your deck team? Uh I know that it must be rough controlling everything from the second floor, but um <laughs> You def- you do live upstairs, I mean. Guess what? God. Still funny. Gonna say it every week. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna say it every single week. It's gonna work for me every time. Hey, uh, uh, can you? Uh, your your name your name is uh, is Paul? No, my name is Luca. Ah, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. To say it. <laughs> what floor do you live on? <laughs> I'm actually. I mean, it's we're actually pretty low down there in the in the in the belly of yeah yeah yeah, but just. If you had to say it was a floor, what kind of floor would it be? Who do you live upstairs from? <laughs> you can do it. You can do it, Luca. Alternately, if you ever went to a diner, what kind of diner would it be called? Would it belong to someone whose name appears on Bravo a lot? Just say just say anything pertaining to Zan Vega. I'll just take anything at this point. <laughs> she, only has, she only has two songs. Come on, you can hit one of them. Nope. Don't know what you're saying. Okay, you know what? We're going to try this again tomorrow, Luca, okay? But in the meantime, guess what? You're a nice person. You've got crazy eyes, but a nice smile. And uh, you were very humble in the beginning, you know? And so, because you were so humble, and because I like your brand of crazy eyes. Listen, I love a crazy eye. 
And because you're very good looking, uh, and for no other reason, uh, you are now full time bullshit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Congratulations. I really loved how you knew how far away that barge was. So, based on that flickering moment, will you be my full time bullshit? <laughs> He's and like, he's just looking at her with this shit eating grin, like, are you fucking kidding me? And he's like, Yeah, I would love to. She goes, Yeah, okay, me too. And he's like, This whole time I'm thinking, sweet, the new boatswain's gonna come in and then we'll be done, you know? I mean, we haven't even put this thing in the dock yet. <laughs> She's really <laughs> trusting me to do this. This is crazy. Okay, Luca. So before you become boatswain, you have to take a sacred oath, okay? I'll start it. Da 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 da. Okay, now you. Da 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 da. Oh no, I've made a huge mistake. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know the rest of it. You know, guys, let me tell you. Okay, Luca, you can go. Okay, learn some music references. And uh, go ahead and tell the whole crew that you are now the bosun. Because what, what a captain really should love more than anything is just having the crew declare themselves things. So, okay, so go on and do that. <laughs> now, let me tell you, audience, you know, I've got a lot of faith in Luca because Captain Jason recommended him. Okay? <laughs> I'm putting a lot of faith in Captain Jason recommendations. And this guy's smart. He's quick. He can call distances. Hey, let's show a clip. How far is this boat to this barge? <laughs> oh, five inches. <laughs> no. <laughs> Try again, Ruan. 18 feet. <laughs> no, Ruan. We're overseas now. Let's change it. 99,001 beers <laughs> on the wall. <laughs> okay. okay, Ru. Okay, Ru. That, that'll do, Ru. So, <laughs> you know, listen, Captain Jason recommends, uh, recommended Luca really highly. And he said, you know, like, uh, he'll be great. He knows his distances. And then he said something else, but we got interrupted because Captain Jason then was midway through plowing his boat up a hillside. So, you know, <laughs> I'm waiting to hear back. But I think he's going to be good. It's going to be great. Commercials. Here comes one right now. Okay, so let's go to Luca. So now we're in the galley, and um, he tells Haley that he's the boss, and she goes, Oh my god, you daddy bosun. Can I get your professional opinion about something? Do I smell like dick? <laughs> Natty bosun. And then now it's time. Meanwhile, um, what's his face? Jack is putting on a big show for dinner. He's doing like a million courses because he heard about the eggs. And so he wants to, he's doing that thing where he's like, he's got to redeem himself. So uh, they're doing this big, big service. So first, um, Italian risotto goes to the table and they all love it. And Dr. Kean's like, this is exactly how risotto is supposed to be made. Although, could I get a medium loose hard egg on top? That would make it even better. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> So um, then we cut to Brooke working, and she's like, um, where's the light switch? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, next chorus, um, Natalia's like, Brooke, Brooke, you want to get this one? And Jess is like, um, my name is Josh. She goes, oh, yeah, that's right, Jess. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, because they have to. It's funny because in the first episode, they have to make Natalia look like a very competent uh, first dude, but now they have to start showing cracks, you know? So um, then Natalia decides to have Jessica. Natalia has Jessica tell Luca to send Haley to go to the sun deck to decorate for EDM. So then Haley, Haley's like, um, uh, okay, but like, I just like don't know how to decorate that well. Like, um, should I just put up like a bunch of dicks on the wall? Because that's what I smell like right now, I think. And Jess is like, um, just pretend it's your own party and then just go for it. Boom, boom, boom. And Captain goes, teamwork makes the dream work. God, I love that hot dog. <laughs> now everyone as a team. Do, 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 do. Okay, now you. <laughs> Sorry, I can't believe I called it a hot dog. It was a banana, damn it. <laughs> so Haley's like, you know, um, I don't even think I've ever decorated for a party before, but I have been to a rave, and I think it's like lights, EDM, and ecstasy, and I've had one of those three things. <laughs> so do I just start like duct taping things together, or dot, dot, dot? <laughs> Maybe let's not go with a duct tape heavy decor, but you know, it's ta scotch tape. 
So, um, mm. uh, so then now there's like a Calvados liqueur dish that's going up and there's a lot of confusion about what that is and then Haley is also conf- she's Haley's just like wandering around this deck just like not sure what to do with things she's just sort of staring she's like red riding hood in the forest just like like where do i go and uh brooke is making a bed and um, she's supposed to be helping her but brooke is taking forever so she never comes so jessica jess comes and she's like was brooke even ever here brooke brooke what's your location she's like i'm heading up now god it's dark in here <laughs> turn on the light switch <laughs> no one's taught me how to do that yet <laughs> And then Natalia tells us, she's like, oh, I've been a solo stew before. I'm used to late nights. I'm used to running on coffee. My blood is coffee. And they show a picture of her just bending down next to a turtle. I was like, this is the second week in a row they've used a turtle photo to, like, exemplify something. I was like, what does Natalia, like, bending down next to a turtle on a yacht have anything to do with late nights? Oh, you know, I'm used to late nights, you know. We had a, once an all tu- an all turtle charter, and they made me get so many cocktails for them, it was like it never ended. <laughs> So now, Jess, did you already do the part where she's like, you're Chief Stew now? No. Right. Oh, no. That's now. So she tells Jess, okay, yeah. So she tells Jess, she's like, okay, listen, I have to set up because I'm the quickest. So you're going to have to do service. And Jess is like, um, but she's the Chief Stew. Like, you should do service. I can do the EDM party. I'm a raver. Hmm. You should have said that, Jess. Like, why didn't you say that? No one so- told me to. <laughs> My best friend, the turtle, she like loves the parties that I throw. But she came, she went on a yacht, she went on a yacht trip once and came back was a total bitch to me afterwards. And she's like, service is so much pressure. Don't do that to me. So then um, the guest wants Natalia. They're screaming for Natalia. And Dr. What's-His-Face is like, we're literally at the last dinner. Where's Natalia? So then Jess is like, hey, Brooke, Brooke, um, they need wine. So could you please fill the primary's glass with wine? And Brooke's like, you guys want wine? And she just starts pouring it. And the doctor's like, um, that's a different wine. That is a different wine. That is not the same wine. So. You love blends. <laughs> so Brooke is like, oh, sorry. Jess told me this one. I'll get you a new one. I was like, whoa, Brooke. Uh, just say sorry. Don't have to throw your fellow stew under the bus for that one. You're gone tomorrow anyway. So uh, basically, things are going into shambles because Natalia has prioritized the stupid EDM party, which is going to look stupid no matter what, instead of service. So then... Um, more food is going up and but doc, now they're like very happy with with jack and kian's like say like, i don't know how he's doing this all by himself in the kitchen like maybe he's not so mortal after all and they're just like really happy and the 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 deck is coming the edm party is coming along and Natalia's like this is called the so random rave cave okay it's gonna be like an open relationship with decor <laughs> It's a cave where you go into with your boyfriend, but you don't know if he's going to fuck someone else in there or you. It's really fun. Really bright lights, because I've got flashlights that I'll be shining on you the entire time. <laughs> and then um, some roasted Branzino comes out, but Jess presents it and she goes, we have some rose Branzino. <laughs> I was like, no one called her out. I was surprised the doctor was like, um, I'm not getting any notes of rose in this. Uh- <laughs> it did sound like that. It sounded like that's what he was telling her to serve. But she just, I mean, come on. So then Jess goes, hey, what kind of meat is this? And that's like, uh, you know that deer that died? It's that. <laughs> you, know, you know that deer that died? I'm like, from the it's long kiss goodnight? Which one are you talking about? <laughs> Tommy boy? So, uh, so they served the venison, and um, some guy named Carl's like, you know what? This felt hot, heart, and soul. <laughs> And then Kian's like, we got to bring Jack back to Los Angeles. Like, we'll invest in a restaurant for him. I'm like, not after you talked about his eggs. I'm not going there. Yeah. So let's see. So the rave is looking good. Um, The doctor, now it's time to party. So the guys start wooing, you know, they're like, woo, woo, a rave, a rave. And uh, then now it's like, I'm going to do a toast. All right. There's big sheep, there's little sheep, but there's no sheep, so like friend sheep. Kian's like, um, I want to lose my dinner over that corny ass speech, okay? Obviously, we know the cooler toast is there's hard eggs, there's easy eggs, but the best eggs are medium eggs. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> All right, I've got one. 
Um, some people can, some people can't. Nobody lies about exiles more than Americans. All right, that's it. <laughs> oh, I've got one. Here's to the blenders, here to the fenders, and here's to the Americans who think chickens are tenders. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so she's like I'm not gonna lie I'm pretty good as chief fingers crossed that the new chief Steve will come in and we'll have a dream team last year I thought it w I had one and then it all came crashing down and we see a clip of her bitching uh, last year about stuff like I'm just trying to take it day by day why is this girl attacking me I'm not gonna listen to that Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't listen to that bullshit. Did you say something, Dave? Uh, so, so the guest party till 2.33 in the morning or something. And then yeah. the next more. Oh, at the very end of the night, one of the guys is just snoring on the couch and they cover him with a little blanket. <laughs> yeah. And then meanwhile, Natalia gets into her bed and um, she's texting with her boyfriend. And um, she's talking about training Brooke and saying like that, that. Well, she's basically like saying, oh, God, I'm really worried about this new Chief Stew coming in because if she's a she's a nightmare, I don't know what I'm even going to do. By the way, have you had sex with anyone? <laughs> He's like, you really got to stop asking that question. She's like, I don't even care. I don't even care about it because I'm so tired. So, so seven in the morning. Yeah, that guy is still passed out on the sofa. They're all cleaning around him and he has headphones on. He like, I'm a little... I was going to say I'm a little impressed with his ability to just drown out everything around him. But I'm also like, you're on a yacht. You have a whole nice bed. And you're like willfully not. You're staying on that sofa. No, I was they like, have to share. I think this is the one of the things where they, they have share? to share. Because there's so many people. Yeah. They've only oh. got like three rooms, don't they? Really? I thought, but this is like the biggest yacht they've ever had. This is this is a 12,000 square foot skyscraper on its side yacht. That's why we're in a shipping port or something like that. Right? Well, that's true, but I'm not really sure how that all works because I tune out during the tour part. Because that's oh. like just because we, it happens in every single episode where they're like, here's the tour or every new charter that we get to. That's like a moment when you're taking notes. You just get to be like, I don't have to do anything right now. I know. I'm, I'm going to watch the camera go from room to room vertically in a very smooth fashion. So, um, hmm. the, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Oh, so, uh basically um it's the morning natalia's exhausted because she the other thing is natalia should have gone to sleep but she is one of those people she put all the work on her shoulders so she stayed up late when she should have gone to sleep early or -er, and so now she's exhausted today and she's really going slow and um she's like <sighs> I don't know what the fuck's going to happen with this new Chief Stew's going to arrive. I'm like, uh, and I'm like going to be like, you know, pleasure. Everything's set up. Here's all the easy stuff. I can't wait to impress them. Can someone get me a coffee? Um, mm -hmm. And then Jack, meanwhile, is telling us, Yesterday, there were a couple of hiccups with breakfast over easy, over medium, like potato, potato. So I'm making quiche. A monkey with eyes with no eyes could make a quiche. So then he's talking to Lara, and Lara's trying to do his accent, and he's like, Oh, everyone thinks everyone thinks they can do it, but everyone's terrible at it, and they think it's good. And I was like, I took that very personally, and you're correct. <laughs> okay, you are correct, sir. <laughs> yeah, because he tells her, I'm not from Ireland. Because <laughs> she apparently did an Irish accent. As um, We would not know do. anything about that. I don't know anything. <laughs> Yes. So then the captain is uh, calling for anchor to be hauled, breakfast is served, the slide is being blown up, and uh, Gerard is like, oh, you got more French donuts downstairs? Croissants. I mean croissants. <laughs> yeah, they all like the quiche too, by the way. They're very happy with the quiche. So, uh, you know, congrats to the monkey with no eyes who made it. And uh, the anchor comes up and everything, and, and then there's drama. More drama. Sandy, Sandy, Luca, there's a brick attached to our anchor. Oh, okay. So uh, I hope there's no body attached to that. <laughs> it's a commercial break. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> I love that because who throws bricks in the water? You do only see that in like mafia movies, you know? Um, so then uh, they're like, can we get, can we get a knife from you, uh, Jack? And Jack's like, bread knife, steak knife. Oh, there it is. Brick knife. <laughs> <laughs> that was the Harry Potter joke in me. You know, just a joker like Harry Potter. 
<laughs> so, so they cut the cement so. brick off. <laughs> so <laughs> for anyone who was really concerned about what was going to happen, uh, the whatever rope it is that's attached to the brick, they cut it. Yeah. So um, they, he got the eggs right this time. Everyone's super impressed. And then they're giving Luca, Laura, and Haley are giving uh, Luca shit for being bosun. And they're coming like, oh guys, you're something so impressive. And then everyone's packing to go. And then the pilot comes. He's like, hello, because it is time for the pilot to come park the boat. You mean a human Google Maps? So uh, he's so he comes on board and Sandy goes, Buongiorno. And he's like, I speak English. So Luca's Luca's nervous because he it's their first docking and he's been graduated to Bosun and they haven't even docked yet. So they're docking and is it gonna happen? They're throwing lines, Haley's having an issue with something, and it's like, oh my god, the music is so intense, they're coming in. It's fine, they dock. It's it's totally fine. Everything's safe. It's fine, yeah. They're yeah. they're all good. So now the doctor's speech. He's like, you are the closest, the coolest captain there ever was. Jack, I want to recognize you. Great job, Natalia. Thank you so much for treating us so special. Captain, give me a wink. Give me a wink. Now give me a blink. <laughs> All right. Still looking good there, you. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to go invest in a restaurant in Los Angeles. We'll talk to you later. Bye, pours. So they leave. It's like, okay, everyone, gather around for a tip meeting. Um, if you're hoping this is when you're going to be distributed some money, you're wrong. If this is the time when I'm going to give you some tips. Okay. All right. Incredible. Incredible. Hey, everything we went through to get off the dock, you know, Rue, unfortunately, didn't have the correct paperwork. Um, it was actually not even paper. It was, it was just some cellophane that he'd put some stickers on. So it was a really bad CV, it turns out. But I want to tell you guys, I witnessed things, okay? And that's what happened there. You know, I said, cause some distances. And then um, he literally tried calling someone named Distance, okay? And uh, that was that was, <laughs> that was rough. Yeah, but I, uh, Luca, yeah. Listen, I witnessed things. So, uh, unfortunately, Rue has drowned in a silo. I'm sorry. So, anyway. Because <laughs> I witnessed. I witnessed it. I witnessed. Okay, so... <laughs> Luca, you know, you called those uh, meters coming in. That was pretty fun. And I've always corrected people. You know, for example, when Hannah said, wow, look at me. I, I'm on a boat. I can do heroin in my toes. And I said, nope, no, you can't. Because there's a lady named Mary Timelaw. And, uh, you know, she's in some clap house somewhere, uh, probably dead under a brick. Oh, God. <laughs> a, a brick holding down a murdered person. Okay, so let's uh, let's move on. So, Luca, hey, quick, real quick, frozen. real quick, oh, Luca. Really quick. Okay. Hey. Go ahead. Go um, ahead. How far is this? How far is the ceiling from where you're sitting? Uh, about, about ten feet. Okay. You know what? Let's confirm that. Why don't you take this tape measure? <laughs> Hold on, everyone. <laughs> take this tape measure and go up the staircase. Okay. All right. I guess I can do that. Hey, Luca. Where are you now? Where are you now, Luca? <laughs> uh, I'm upstairs. But specifically, if you had to say which floor it was, you are Luca on the. Third floor, I guess, now, since you had me go up one, because then there's the basement under that. Did I do it right? All right, you know, just sit back down. We'll try this again tomorrow. We'll, yeah, okay. we'll just, we'll, we'll have to workshop this, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wow. You know, and look at you. The the girl who keeps coming around asking people if she smells like dick, you're something. And then, Lara, <laughs> you're something else. Remember when I almost chopped you in half with the prop? That was fun. Listen, my <laughs> point is I'm just so happy to have women on deck, okay? You two, you really dug in. Jack, you set a bar. That was super fun. Can't go below the bar, Jack, okay? Do not go below the bar unless it's to take a tutorial on YouTube on eggs, okay? <laughs> hey, Natalia, you really stepped it up. You were like a dance movie from the 2000s. You stepped it up because like knowing that you didn't have our, you know, knowing we didn't have our chief or for Kyle and then you stepped it back. Did you not step it back? I mean, guess, guess what? I just publicly announced that you've been stepped back. Okay. So I just want to say thank you. And uh, I hope you enjoy uh, that taste of power before now you have Kyle yelling at you. Okay. That's going to be fun for you, huh? Smiles. <sighs> So Natalia's like, uh, Natalia's like, I feel like we had a very successful first charter, being the first and all. I think we smashed it out of the ball cart. Is it the ball cart? Is it a ball chart? What is it? We smashed it out of something. We smashed it out of a baby deer. <laughs> hey, and everyone, it's our last night with this girl. 
She sort of looks like Carrie Underwood, somehow is related to the Sprout store. So uh, whatever her name is, just be nice to her for like another 12 hours or so. Okay, everyone, have a great night. So now they're getting ready to go out, and Natalia is flirting with Luca and gets in a towel and goes to his door. She's like, oh, look there. Oh, hello. I didn't even know you were here. You know what I'm looking for? Some shampoo. But do you happen to have any shampoo you might have to bend over to get? <laughs> Luca's like, she works for the interior. She knows where the fucking shampoo is. One thing that gets me in trouble on yachts is ladies. And then we see a flashback of Luca making out with Jamie. You know, I I would actually really like to have a Jamie and Culver update because, you know, Culver is like somewhere in Italy waiting in line for cotton candy while Jamie's just like sitting on a dock waiting for a yacht to save her. Yeah. So Haley and Laura are talking and Haley's like, so are you bi? Are you like fully bi? And Laura's like, if I'm drunk, I, I'll kiss a guy. But recently decided it makes me unhappy because in South Africa, it's not open. And my family's very conservative. So she tells us that she didn't really realize that she even liked women until she was in quarantine, um, which um, what a what a weird, what a weird <laughs> time to find out. If, and listen, then all you can all really do is masturbate. <laughs> we all found out a lot of things in quarantine. She, Mostly, uh, what did really, you find out? Um, I found out that I like Sondheim. <laughs> so I actually just got That's gayer. That's true. You did. <laughs> yeah, I got gay. I guess quarantine was a time to get gayer. It was. I learned how to play piano. That's pretty gay. That's I mean, very, when you're me. Well, you especially like, uh, if you were doing it like a Liberace style, especially. No, no, I'm not. Oh, that's I can only play a few chords, but I can still I can still sing a show tune in my house while I play for myself like I'm in a piano bar, and that is priceless. Thanks, Cove. <laughs> yeah. So now the group heads out to go out, and they all pile into vans. And Laura's like, "I love straight girls. I love, I love turning turning the shit out of them, and I love a girly girl with nails and de- and a." Uh, handbag still can't do her accent what service i'm just gonna do all of them all you at know, once <laughs> we're gonna need to do an accent class i think next week yeah we remember, we've done them for a couple below decks i'll get some video yeah. of these people and then we can just go through with each other next week and do an accent class because yeah we need to work this is a hard one just, i i was yeah. working on her last night and i was like I was great. I sounded just like her, but today it's all like. Bruh, but bruh, you know, bruh. when you have any time between watching the show and then getting here, it's all out the window. I just I'm with need. You on that. I need my intro words. You know, like there's always those phrases that help me get into the voice, and I just yeah. That's why. What was that one? There was one phrase we used to say all the time, just because it would get us into a voice, and I can't even remember it anymore. But yeah, we need our phrases. But we'll take a class. Okay, so now they're going through the town. They're having fun. Lara's carrying um, Natalia around. And um, Natalia's trying to, like, speak nicely about Kyle. I know she hates Kyle's guts. So I think this is weird. But she's like, oh, my God, you guys are going to love the new crew. Kyle, going to love him. Absolutely wonderful. Everyone loves Kyle. I was like, nobody likes Kyle. (laughs) Are you fucking kidding me? I'm horrified. I've been horrified for months knowing that Kyle's coming back. You guys are going to love Kyle. Like, the best part about Kyle is getting to do all the work that he was supposed to do. You can just absolutely love that. You're going to love when he gets sick and then spends five days in his bed. It's going to be so fun for everyone here. And Jack's like, but how do you feel about being demoted? The new shit's too better be good. And she, and that's not only coming from me. That's coming from Harry Potter. Am I right? <laughs> She's like, oh, I'm, I'm being I'm excited. Well, I'm being evicted, I guess. And Laura's like, what is evicted? And she's just, you don't know what evicted is. <laughs> and Ellie's like, yeah, you don't know a lot of the words we use. What's up with that, Ligma? That means like my balls. <laughs> Laura's, That's English. So Laura talks about how basically she grew up um, speaking Afrikaans and then she went to high school and then English was brought into her life. And now she's been trying to, you know, learn words so that way she could be more articulate. She's like, oh, articulate. That's the big word for me, actually. That was on my list. This That's is also so a big word for impressive. me. I am nice. always so impressed with people who are bilingual. Like it is. Me I am too. so, so jealous. Like I, I cannot understate this enough. I think... It is such an amazing talent to be bilingual and uh, like to, to be able to converse in two languages. Uh, I just feel like that is so, so hard. And I just, I'm jealous. I'm jealous. I wish I I've could I've tried do it. multiple times. I cannot do it. 
I've I can't Spanish multiple, and I grew up speaking sp- it, and I still can't learn it. I've tried everything. Well, you know what? Except actually doing the classes. That's because I get the I pay for the lessons, and then I think, oh my god, I paid for them, which means I should know it. But mm-hmm. it's like the gym. You can't just pay your membership and then lose weight. You have to show up. And I'm really bad at the showing up part. Shit. It's hard. I mean, like, uh, I, I, tr- I tried to teach myself German with Duolingo. I did that for a few months, like, years ago, which was very fun. But it's a little tricky. And then I then I was like, let me go to see something that's a little bit more practical for where I live. So I've tried to teach myself Spanish. But I just, I, I just don't stick with it. I'm like you. I just, I start doing it. And I don't know. I just... My hat is off to people who can speak multiple languages. Um, so your hat is off your cabeza, if you will. That's your hat. So <laughs> Mon chapeau. Then, later That's on, French, everyone. Natalia I am bilingual. And Luca, <laughs> Natalia, I'm moving up forward now. We're moving forward. All right. Yeah, we're forward. So we're Natalia and Luca are flirting with each other. She's like, are you excited for your new chief, Steve? What's that tattoo about? Tell me about your tattoo. Let me touch it. Oh, my God. Just touched it. Yeah. Why don't you grip me more, you fucking pervert <laughs> all right no. i'm in an open relationship by the way trying to figure out what that means okay do you know <laughs> i don't know does that mean my boyfriend's fucking someone else I have no idea we should text him right now all right i'm gonna give you his number say are you fucking anyone else right now <laughs> you know who else is in an open relationship tattoo the band that's what i heard so also uh, tattoo from love island <laughs> couldn't couldn't keep a single mate you know and always had to have multiples you know what? Uh, there's a planet where people have love of uh, have open relationships. Tatooine, in Star Wars. <laughs> um, did did Luca say what describing his tattoo? Did he say that's Otto Thug Life, baby? Is that what he said? Because nothing seemed Thug Life about that. At all. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't, did not write that down. Um, it's probably I like thought, something else. I just wrote there. down. She said, "What is that tattoo?" And I wrote down, "Show me yours. Tell me your deal." Uh, yeah, that's what I wrote down. Because she has, she has a heart on her bum. She says, "Every girl has a love heart on her bum." It's like, do they? <laughs> also, we really. I, Luca is Luca is so cute, but honestly, I think his tattoos. I don't know. I'm not a big fan of the big butterfly in the middle of his chest. I'll just say that right now. Um. Yeah. Jury's out. I didn't like that one. I think it's like decent work, though. The tattoo work is decent. Yeah. The, but, the artistry is decent on that one. It's just, it's not as bad as some of them we've seen. That's for sure. Yeah. I just don't love when tattoos are like clip art. You know, I don't like that feeling like someone true. took a stamp and was like, there, now there's a butterfly in your chest. I'm like, oh, okay, I guess. Right, but there's also the butterfly symbolically is like you were homely and then you were hot, like you like you cocooned up and then you became hot. And I feel like he's already hot, so I don't like him getting to use the butterfly. But also, like, um, I recently was looking up some of the different characteristics between a butterfly and a moth. And when moths are like, when they land and they're hanging out, their wings are up. In like a little triangle but moths when they land and they're lying down their wings just lie flat and the tattoo because the wings are out sort of has a little bit of a moth vibe to me how about that hmm. okay well there Think you about go that. heard about it here that. first <laughs> so now we go to twerking lara and everyone's like parting really really hard so basically they go home Okay. And yeah. everybody's dress is gungy. And Natalia's in bed texting. She's like, So, oh, I had a great night. Everybody was really fun. Did you hook up with anyone? Oh, you know what? I'm actually too tired to care. Too <laughs> tired. And so he's like, Well, are there any hot guys? And she goes, Yes, actually. Dot, dot, dot. And then he doesn't write back. So she's like, All right. Good night. Pervert. <laughs> yeah, see my it's going boobs. well. Going well. Open relationship, closed communication. So uh, it's the morning and um, they're all waking up and uh, Natalia goes into Sandy's office and she's like, Kept in? And she goes, hello there. Oh, God, sorry. I have a lot of energy because I just remembered we got that hot dog on board. It's really a banana, but it's pretending to be a hot dog. I know it's a banana on the inside. So what's going on? So she's like, it's a new dick hand. Is that going to be male or female? I just want to know which room to put them in. And Sandy's like, well... You and Kyle are going to be in the forward cabin, and the Chief Stew's going to go share with Jess. So, God, can't wait to see you and Kyle sharing confined space together. That's going to be great for everyone on board, huh? Yeah, enjoy mm. that. My man, my man Kyle. Have I called him that yet? 
to watch them. Are you buying it yet? I think, oh, God, you're going to hate this person. <laughs> Can't wait to fire him. So um, now the captain's like, oh, my gosh. Oh, well, hello, I got a buzz. Well, hello, officially, Chief Stu. I'm so glad I got your vi- you got your visa. Will I be seeing you this afternoon? Natalia's already freaking out. It's great. Can't wait to see you in person. <laughs> so there's more cleaning. People, like, give some light goodbyes to Brooke. They're like, who is that girl? Did, the- Did she forget to leave with the other guests? I don't know. So she leaves, and she's she wants to stay in yachting, in case someone wants to know. And then um, there's more cleaning, and now here comes Toomey. Toomey's approaching. She's got a new hairstyle, which looks great on her. Love it. I love Toomey. Um, historically, have always loved Toomey. So um, uh, she's coming on, and Natalia is saying, telling us that like they had a really successful first charter, and she established a really good relationship with everyone, and she's also set up this yacht to be close to perfect. So it's gonna be really hard to hand over the reins to Toomey. And Toomey can't open the door, which is never a good sign to start with. But then she figures it out and she says, oh, my God, I can't believe I'm going to be Chief Stew for the first time. And it's on this huge boat. Like, what the hell? But she goes up to say hi to Captain Sandy. And she's like, oh, well, (laughs) I just want to say they show like some of Toomey's greatest hits for people who didn't watch the first season of of Below Deck uh, Down Under. And uh, we see like Toomey being on top of everything, like Toomey doing this, Toomey doing that. And then they have this one clip where she goes, why can't we deconstruct the idea of a fondue bar? <laughs> I don't know. I thought that was just like the funniest thing. Like, she is going to be a great chief, too. She deconstructed a fondue bar. Which, by the way, isn't a fondue bar pretty much deconstructed already? <laughs> it is. It's- like, what do you want now? Like, to separate the milk fats from the cocoa? <laughs> the cheese from the curds? Uh, it's pretty deconstructed, but okay. <laughs> So um, she goes to see the captain, and the captain's like, oh, wow, we missed you on the first charter, but guess what? Good news. Kyle's coming later. I don't think anybody's ever said that in Kyle's life. (laughs) Good news. Kyle's coming. (laughs) I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm almost there. Frank, love that smile. So then, Frank, uh, Frank, I'm coming, Frank. (laughs) So, um... Uh, San- yeah, Sandy says that Captain Jason highly recommended to me. And so she's like, you know, she really likes that to me is focused and determined and works really hard. And- she's saying Captain Jason a lot. She's giving <laughs> Captain, J- Captain Jason credit. It makes me think they're going to end up hating each other. <laughs> Yeah, I think there's good. This is I, I'm worried that Toomey is going to have a bad season because she had such a good season the first time. I'm worried, um, but I also blame it on Kyle. I'm going to blame if if Toomey has a bad season. I'm going to blame it on Kyle, and here is why: because Toomey is going around saying hi to everyone, and she says that she's worried about walking on this boat and being the new kid in town. Actually, this is not where I say here's why. The point is that at some point here, Toomey says that Kyle told her about Natalia, and I think that. Therefore, Toomey is coming onto this boat with this set, like, sort of poisoned by Kyle and thinking that she has to come on really hard with Natalia. And so I think that's going to make Toomey look And it's typical. And it's what Kyle does. It's what Kyle did last season he was on was to constantly talk about Natasha to talk about Natalia to Natasha and try and turn it and be like, yes. oh, she's so lazy. She says this, she says that. And then turn everything, turn everybody against each other. He's a master of chaos. Yes. So, um, so to me, so Natalia is helping to me with her bags, which ironically, I don't think are to me's. <laughs> and, uh, she's saying that she just flew in from Miami and Natalia's like, Oh my Where God. You don't that's... think they're to me's the brand. What? To me oh. bag. Oh, it's a I pun. Know. It was a I was pun. like, what? Did Timmy take bags off the dock? What are you talking about? <laughs> okay, so I'm glad I asked because I was like, oh my gosh, I don't remember that about Toomey's season. She's just always using someone else's luggage. I just realized that by me pluralizing Toomey's, it's actually sound like I was saying they were, I was accusing her of not having her own bags. I'm like, <laughs> I was like, what is this? She's like, uh oh, unfortunately, I've only got tuxedos to wear out. <laughs> to me stole someone's bags you heard it here first <laughs> what are you talking about okay so that's like a brand of bag of Toomey's. yeah to me oh, is a brand cute. to me okay so yeah <laughs> so talia is helping her and natalia's really going overboard well no pun she's really <laughs> trying to 
go out of her way to be nice. She's like, oh, do you need help with your bags? Oh, have fun. I'll help you. Where did you fly in? Miami. Oh, that's where I'm from. Do you live there? And Timmy's like, oh, no, I would never live in, in uh, Miami. <laughs> Natalia's all mad about it. <laughs> she's like, what the hell kind of... Th I just said I live there. She's like, no, I'm way too good for that. But that's, so by the way, then, the exact sort of thing that Natalia would say to someone too. Oh, I would never live there. I just thin, Coral. Mm. I love that you're already standing up for Toomey and not, like literally nothing has happened. You're like, I'm Team Toomey no matter what. And but fuck by the, Natalia well, for I was being offended. <laughs> I was Team Toomey. Well, I'm, I have a real crossroads because I was Team Natalia last season. I'm Team Toomey from last season, last year. So I'm going to have to see where this goes. <laughs> it's going to be hard. <laughs> so um, this Toomey is like not into this, right? So Natalia is still trying. So now she calls, now they're going to go for a tour. Okay. So Natalia's like, this area is what the la the least used. All right. And Toomey updates us. She's like, you know, I've been in the industry a short time, but it's important to me that people respect my boundaries because I've dealt with people just assuming I'm not capable in the beginning because not, not a lot of people in yachting look like me, first of all. So you start on a different ground, right? Where right. you have to kind of like assert yourself. And then this is where she tells us that she met Kyle at the consulate and Kyle was telling her he basically has ups and downs with Natalia, which means Kyle immediately fucking poisoned her. Kyle sucks, man. He sucks. I'm so hopeful that it's him who gets his ass handed to him. Yeah, so he, uh, so Toomey's like, I don't want to be disrespected, but I also don't want to demand respect. And that's where her struggle comes in. So they go on these this tour and they there's like... Um, some sort of minor scuffle about a small basket full of suntan lotion and uh Natalia she's like is this our suntan lotion just yeah but you know the best thing to do is to like keep it here because if the guests want it then it's just right here and Timmy's like no i prefer not to do that <laughs> and natalia's like okay like okay you're gonna make a stand on where we keep sun suntan lotion okay <laughs> natalia's like but then the guests know it's new and to like but they can open it and they can check it's new i was like oh this feels i don't really understand what's going on but it feels tense so then um then natalia opens up a drawer of silverware which from our vantage point kind of looked like a big drawer of loose silverware but i'm sure it wasn't maybe it just looked like that and she's showing the no, silverware it was a big a pile of silverware okay it i thought it was not. maybe crazy okay it was a pile of silverware and then natalia's natalia's like so we keep glasses we have some glasses over here and we put the tumblers over there we have wine glasses three wine glasses upstairs and three down in the bilge and um occasionally we have some coasters we sort of hide the coasters like a scavenger hunt so that's kind of how we do it around here and doomy's like mm -hmm. uh-huh great great <laughs> And um, she's like, yeah, so, you know, um, the chef's great. He's got a lot of experience. So what do you think of the boat? And Timmy's like, it's interesting. It reminds me of Harry Potter, which <laughs> is funny that people keep bringing up Harry Potter. But actually, in Toomey's case, it's very funny because the furniture really does look like, like that dark robes. blue with little stars all over it. Yeah. So Natalia's like, well, you know what? Talk about gratitude. The first charter was wild with two people down, but it was really good. It was really good. I'm um, not saying that I kind of killed it being you with only two people, but I kind of did. And the chef's got amazing feedback. He's really good. and He's really chill. And to me, he's like, yeah, but it's only the, it's only the, it's only charter one though. And she's like, yeah, but he's got so much experience, but it's only charter one. Yeah. But look, he's like really good. Like he has like, he's like a Harry Potter. It's charter one. Every time she says Charter One, Natalia, like, it's like, <laughs> yeah. And she's like, well, what do you think, though? And Toomey's like, well, the organization's a shit show. I'll tell you that. And she goes, excuse me, you mean the boat or ourselves? And she goes, no, no, no. The boat itself, the organization is. But she is still, by proxy, dissing Natalia. Like, you didn't get all this stuff better organized mm. in the first charter, right? You're right. So Natalia's like, well, actually, I was going to say, I think it's been going pretty well. And she's like, no, no, I'm not talking about you. I just mean the boat itself. I mean, the way it's set up is a shit show. And Natalia's like very defensive about it. She's like, well, you know, I think it's amazing. And like, they've got like service on each level and there's a glass on each level and like everything's on like on one level. And to me, it's like, I'm giving you my opinion though. And I'm telling you, this is how I feel. And Natalia's, and I was like, but you could get the glassware from anywhere you want on the boat. 
Oh, yeah. And she goes, all right, you don't need to get defensive. I'm not getting defensive. She goes, well, you're getting offended, and I'm not offending you. The organization you've done is impeccable, and what you've done in a day is amazing. Before you got on this vessel, the way that they set up the boat is not the way I would like to work on a boat, is all I'm saying. She goes, oh, well, I'm just telling you it's been great. It's Timmy's been like, great. So, I'm just giving I'm my opinion. I'm just giving my opinion. All right. And that's well, that. I'm just saying we've got service on every level. But I'm and giving you my you opinion. Levels. I'm just well, giving you my opinion. I'm going to do the thing with that's my hand fine. to show this is a circle fine. my hand to show it's my opinion. Oh, that's all. you don't need to do this to me with your hands. You don't need to do that. But thank you. Thank you, though. It's like, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. It's not going This is going to well. be bad. This <sighs> is going to be bad. I blame Kyle. I blame Kyle. Yeah. Kyle poisoned the well right at the start. Yep. That's the theory. So we don't know what's going to happen next week. We didn't see previews, so we'll have to see. But um, yeah, always a shit show on Blow Deck every single time. Yeah. So yeah, thanks everyone for being here and listening. And um, thanks for coming to Crappy Hour last night. And we'll catch you later. We got so many other recaps this week. So be sure to subscribe Bye. if you haven't. Bye. Bye. Watch What Crappens would like to thank its premium sponsors. Ain't no thing like Allison King. Ashley Saboni, she don't take no baloney. Strolling the park with Caitlin Clark. She's not just a Sheila, she's a Daniela. Itchels. Aaron McNicholas, she don't miss no trickleus. She's never scary, it's the Green Fairy. Jamie, she has no last namey. Hava Nagila Weber. Know your worth with Jason Kurtz. Sip some scotch with Jessica Trotch. She's always supplying, it's Kelly Ryan. Kristen the Piston Anderson. Let's give a kiss arino to Lisa Lino. Megan Berg, you can't have a burger without the Berg. Roo Roo La Roo. The Bay Area Betches. Betches. And our super premium sponsors. Somebody get us 10 cc's of Betsy MD. We're taking the gold with Brenda Silva. Let's get real with Caitlin O'Neill. Don't get salty with Christine Pepper. Can't have a meal without the Emily Sides. Nobody holds a candle to Jamie Kendall. She's not harsh, she's Jill Hirsch. She's a little bit loony. Junie, my favorite Murdo, Karen McMurdo. We love him madly, it's Kyle Pod Shadley. Let's go on a bender with Lauren Fender. We want to hang with Liz Lang. The incredible edible Matthew sisters. Nancy Cease and DeSisto. Give him hell, Miss Noel. She's the queen bee, it's Sarah Lemke. Shannon, out of a cannon, Anthony. Let's take off with Tamla Plain. She's quite the catch, it's Victoria Cotchett. She ain't no shrinking Violet Kuchar. We love you guys. Hey, Prime members, you can listen to Watch Your Crappens ad-free on Amazon Music. Download the Amazon Music app today. Or you can listen ad-free with Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts. Before you go, tell us about yourself by completing a short survey at Wondery.com.